steps in advancement in the frontline treatment of advanced Hodgkin lymphoma. We are here to address the phase three echelon one study. And to do that, I'm with Dr. Joseph Connors, who is an MD and clinical director of the Center for Lymphoid Cancer at the BC Cancer Agency. I think this may actually be the first clinical trial in frontline advanced Hodgkin lymphoma to show superior efficacy of a regimen that eliminates bleomycin. So I really wanted to have a chance to chat with you a little bit. Tell me about Echelon 1. Okay, so Echelon 1 is the trial in which we're looking to see where's the best place to put a new targeted agent that we've been using for relapsed patients and for subsequent treatments for some time, Brentuximab vidotin, which is a targeted agent that latches on to the CD30 marker on the surface of the malignant cells in Hodgkin lymphoma. And we have been working towards this effort to define its role in the primary treatment or the initial treatment of patients with advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma. And what did we know up to now, up before you started to present here today? What, what do we know about this in this setting? Well, we know two things. First, background. We've been using ABVD, the standard regimen, for more than 30 years. It has a very thoroughly established track record and has stayed to be the best primary chemotherapy for advanced Hodgkin lymphoma. However, uh, we also know it comes with problems. One of the agents is bleomycin, and although we've figured out strategies to reduce the amount of bleomycin, it's not been possible to eliminate it completely from the primary treatment. Balancing all that, we know that brentuximab vidotin is the most active agent, the most effective agent, crafted for the treatment of Hodgkin lymphoma in decades, as of now anyways. And that targeted agent does two things nicely. First, it goes after the malignant cells selectively and therefore spares the normal cells within a person's body, and so it holds to a minimum the undesirable side effects. The final question to answer was, could it be safely combined with other standard drugs, AVD, and would it work better? Would the new combination work better? I think we've been able to answer both questions with this trial. And you have 1,334 patients, so what are you reporting here at ASH 2017? So this was a properly done prospective randomized trial with independent review of all of the results such that we can have strong confidence that the difference in outcome for the patients, which was crafted to look specifically at the effectiveness of the primary chemotherapy, the initial round of chemotherapy, definitely shows the superiority of the new combination. It's in some sense is a modest superiority because it's a 5% improvement in the modified progression-free survival. But in another sense, it's a very real achievement because it means a quarter of the patients that would have relapsed or had a lack of success of their primary treatment can avoid that by taking the newer experimental treatment. And in addition, we learned in large numbers of patients who were carefully monitored on a clinical trial that although there is somewhat predictably more toxicity, higher levels of febrile neutropenia, higher levels of peripheral neuropathy. There are effective maneuvers to either prevent those, co those complications or to diminish their impact and allow patients to recover from them successfully. So what about comparative safety? This was the new, the new approach is better? Yeah, <clears throat> if one uses appropriate measures, so this would be incorporation of uh, primary prophylaxis with GCSF, the febrile neutropenia rate can be held very close to the rate typically seen with ABVD. In addition, although more peripheral neuropathy occurs, the patients tend to recover from this rather well over extended periods of follow-up. So very few patients are left with symptomatically troublesome peripheral neuropathy in the long run, and they make a good recovery. We also know that we're able to take out the bleomycin, and when that's out, there isn't the risk of unexpected pulmonary toxicity, which was already low even in the ABVD arm of the trial because our clinicians are smart. They know right. how to manage bleomycin, but it wasn't eliminated. And if you look at the deaths that occurred during treatment, the entire excess number of deaths in the ABVD arm were due to pulmonary toxicity. Wow. So we've moved it aside. So the drug is currently not approved as frontline therapy for Hodgkin lymphoma. I would imagine there's going to be plans to submit this for an expanded indication. So my understanding is that um, the FDA, which is the regulatory body in the United States that will be ruling on this, is already 
in the course of analyzing these okay. data and they are already in the midst of making their decision about whether the data from this trial justify licensing of the drug for this use. So but you're correct, it's still an off-label use at this point, exactly. and we need to wait for the FDA to make their decision, which should be available within a few months. So what's the take-home message here from Echelon 1 at this point? The, the take-home message is basically that for the first time in many years, we've crafted a better way to treat advanced stage Hodgkin lymphoma. Better in the sense of more efficacious, more effective, and acceptably toxic, such that we can move forward to a, at least the option of a new frontline treatment. In the past, the only efforts that have demonstrated superiority of an alternative regimen have come with a very high price of toxicity what's seen often is an unacceptably high price of toxicity. And so this allows us to move forward with some confidence that without really asking our patients to put up with an increased burden of long-term toxicity, we can do something that improves the likelihood they can be cured the first time around.